As we reported, Senator Dianne Feinstein is introducing an assault weapons ban in Congress. Here's what she told me about that. There is no Second Amendment right to bear every type of weapon that you know of. These are a certain class of weapons. They are designed to kill large numbers of people in close combat. I don't believe the Second Amendment covers them. Many Americans agree, but many others do not, including my next guest, who's former Marine, Joshua Boston, who wrote a scathing letter to Senator Feinstein that went viral on the Internet. Uh, welcome to you, uh, Joshua Boston. Thank you, Piers. Just to clarify your credentials, you served in Afghanistan twice and Iraq twice between 2004 and 2011 with the Marines. Uh, you're no longer in the military. Um, thank you for your service, first of all. Uh, some members of my family would have been out there uh, fighting with you in both of Iraq and Afghanistan, and I know what you guys went through. It's very tough. Um, talk to me about guns and why you felt the need to write to the senator in the way that you did. Uh, Senator Feinstein's legislation is essentially stopping us from owning AR-15s if it passes. Once uh, we register these weapons, they won't be transferable to anybody, which means once I get old, if I want to pass these we my rifles down to my children, I won't be able to because it'll be registered in my name and the law says it cannot be transferred. Now, to me, that sounds exactly like I'm being, my family is going to be disarmed down the road. And these weapons, I understand that bad things happen with them, bad things happen with cars. But the Second Amendment was put there for a reason. And it was put there to prevent things that we don't want happening with our government. I mean, you so can't, that's why I wrote the letter. Right, but you, you use an analogy of the car, as many gun rights people do, you can't pass the car to your child without registration for the child involving uh, all the various uh, forms you fill in for that and the various permissions you have to get. What's the difference? The car is not specifically mentioned in the Bill of Rights. Well, nor, Arms but, are. But, but nor is an AR-15 assault rifle. Neither are muskets nor is hunting or sporting, but everybody seems to bring that up. Right, but there are already, as you know, numerous gun control laws in America. It's purely a question of degree. There is. And my, my question for you is this. You know what these weapons can do better than most. Uh, let me thro throw to a clip here. This is General Stanley McChrystal, who was one of the commanding officers for the American military in Afghanistan. He was on MSNBC's Morning Joe this morning. He said this. I spent a career carrying uh, typically either an M16 and then later an M4 carbine. And an M4 carbine fires a... 223 caliber round, which is 5.56 millimeter, at about 3,000 feet per second. When it hits a human body, the effects are devastating. It's designed to do that. And that's what our soldiers ought to carry. I personally don't think there's any need for that kind of weaponry on the streets, and particularly in, around the schools in America. Powerful words there from a very high ranking uh, recently departed general. I suppose my obvious question uh, for you, uh, Joshua, is this. Why would you want to give one of these killing machines to one of your children anyway? First off, uh, we don't own M4s or M16s. We own AR-15s and different variants of. They're not the same rifle. Right, but you, very but yes, but you know, you know as well as I do that the AR-15, when it's modified, can perform almost exactly like an M16. I mean, we know that. And we saw with uh, James Holmes, whose trial's going on now, that in Aurora, he was able to unload uh, at least 70, possibly more, uh, bullets into a crowded movie theater in a matter of minutes. We know that. So the difference is almost indistinguishable in terms of firepower at such close range. No, that's not even true. The weapon M4, M16 was designed to engage targets with precision at medium ranges, not for close quarters combat. Right, but if you have an AR-15, whether you're at close quarters, or you're 100 meters away, you're going to cause extensive and significant damage. It's possible, true, but that damage is guaranteed to happen when people aren't allowed to carry a, a concealed weapon in a movie theater, or teachers aren't allowed to carry one in their schools so to you, protect your answer, the children that we love. So your answer is that everybody in the movie theater would be armed with an AR-15? No, that's not what I said. I said they should be able to carry such weapons. They should have that choice. 
they shouldn't be denied that right to self-defense right, yeah, because of the actions of lunatics. Right, and again, I say this with respect, though, that choice is fine, but if everybody exercises that choice and is legally allowed to do so, you could end up with every movie theater and every school and every church and every shopping mall in America with everybody armed with an AR-15 assault rifle and magazines that can kill 100 people in a, in a minute. Where does that lead America to other than utter Wild West hell? All right, they said this was going to happen whenever Texas instituted its, its concealed handgun laws, and it hasn't happened. In, in the uh, Clackamas Mall shooting, there was a 22-year-old carrying a concealed weapon and presented his weapon at the, at the threat, and he held his fire, just like happened at Congresswoman Gifford's shooting. There was a CHL holder there, and he held his fire. The American people aren't as gun-happy and trigger-happy as they're being painted out to be by the media. They are smarter than that. They know when to hold their fire. They know when to fire. And we can increase the chances of success for these people that get caught in these situations for their survival by education. We've got to stop making this a taboo subject to everyone because it's scary. We can't give up our rights because we're afraid. Right, I suppose the only thing I would say to that is that I believe the rights of a six or seven-year-old child to go to school without the fear of being murdered, to me, exceed and come higher than any rights to own an AR-15 assault rifle. That's my point. Well, Piers, I don't disagree with you. I don't think ch children should have to be going to school worried about being murdered. Uh, but we have to accept reality. No matter what laws we pass, I, Lord knows we have laws. And during the last assault weapons ban, it didn't stop Columbine from happening. It didn't stop the West Hollywood shootout from happening. These things happen. There are criminals in our world that we have to contend with. And disarming people and taking the AR-15s out of their homes isn't going to help. There was a lady in Georgia who shot a man six times. He laid down, cried, got up, and left. Now imagine if there were multiple attackers. She only had six bullets in her pistol. If okay. there were more than one attacker, she could not be alive today. Well, again, I would say that I... I can totally understand and respect an Americans wish to defend themselves in their home against intruders I get that I don't see why you can't do with a handgun or a pistol and the idea that you need AR-15s you and I will have to disagree on that because I can't give anything I would rather less give one of my children gotta say it's education you have to teach them you have to educate people ignorance is a bad thing you have to educate yourself on the weapons Okay. This I mean, yes, they are dangerous, but they do have benefits, regardless of the evil one man okay. commits with it. Joshua Boston, listen, I have great respect for the service you've given your country, and you raise some interesting points. I don't see any benefit to a civilian owning a, an AR-15. I see lots of benefit to uh, someone in the military defending the freedom of the country, and I'm sure you did that extremely capably, and I thank you for joining me.